Hello Believe Nation, I started the Mentor Me series to try to hang around people who've done a lot more than us and hopefully by spending a little bit more time with them, some of how they think, their values, their beliefs, their mindsets, their attitudes seeps into us to help us become the best version of ourselves. So today we're going to learn from Dan Pena and some of his best motivation. Mentor Me Dan. Rule number two is my personal favorite and I'd love to know which one you guys like the best. And as always guys, as you're watching, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave Leave it down in the comments below, put quotes around it so other people can be inspired as well. And when you write it down, it's much more likely to stick with yourself as well. Enjoy. Best advice I ever got from Mr. Grazos, do it. He didn't say just do it, he didn't swear. Uh, and the best advice I've ever given anybody is just do it. Uh, we take too much time procrastinating. We take too, and because we're afraid of failure, and, and uh, f uh, fear is false expectations appearing real. We're worried about what other people think. We're trying to fit in. And I can go through a whole litany of bullshit. Now, it's not bullshit because it's not true. Litany of stuff why you are where you are because you just didn't do it. You didn't want to make a mistake. You got a mortgage. You got uh, two ex-wives. You got a 15-year-old daughter who's uh, pregnant. I, your, your, your dad's got Alzheimer's. Your mother's got emphysema spitting up blood. I can go on and on and on and on. But the bottom line is, if you had 15 years ago, you had just done it. 10 years ago, you had just done it. Five years ago, if you had just done it. Six months ago, if you had just done it, you probably wouldn't be in the position you're in now. So I'm saying no matter what your age is, it's still time to just go out and do it. Just go out and do it. Most of you lack the skills to sell your vision with clarity because you don't practice and, and, and the travesty really is is because you don't believe enough in it. You just don't. And if what you're trying to finance isn't your dream, isn't your vision, I mean, the banker or the person on the other side of the table sees through it clearly. They know just absolutely, definitively. Because at the end of the day, they want to feel down deep inside, warm and fuzzy, that this person or this person will do whatever it takes to pay me back the money. And if you don't believe with all your heart, then you're not going to, you know, go that extra mile. That's what they want to believe. And most of you don't believe passionately in what you're doing. And that's why it's very easy for me to say you ought to turn the damn key. Just walk away. And look for something that you can passionately believe in. Is that so difficult? I'm 15 pounds overweight, my doctor said. And he said, you know, if you wanted to be in perfect health, which everything else is perfect, my health, I'm, I'm well, you should lose 15 pounds. And I said, I'd have to give up three or four martinis and a bottle of wine every night. I'm not willing to do that. It's, I know what it takes and I know what I'd have to do. I used to run marathons, I run the Boston Marathon. And I know what it took to train. Um, and I'm not, you know, I don't run like that anymore, I stare master. Uh, but I mean, I, we all know how to lose weight. We all know how to get physically fit. We all know how to build our businesses. I can go to the Yellow Pages today and pick out any business that's in this room and I can find somebody that's beating your brains out. I don't care what you do. And as, as some of you have heard me say, but I'm gonna say it again because it's important. For this example, again, we all have 100 IQ. For some of you, I'm giving you some. For some, I'm taking away some. We all know nobody can have 10 times our IQ. Well then why the hell do people make 10 times more than we do, a thousand times more than we do? Why? Because they think and dream bigger than we do. High performance people have high expectations, not average expectations. Do you think anyone in this room could go and make hundreds of millions of dollars in your system? It is simple. Can everybody in this room do it? No. Because everybody in this room is not willing to make the sacrifices. I don't know how to do it for our work week which came up uh, a little earlier. I don't know, and I know Ferris. 
And if you believe the four-hour work week, I've got a bridge to sell you in New York. <laughs> I mean, uh, one of the comments from the seminar that just ended, from the 18, 20 kids, all of which were about half my age. We had a couple of old gits in their 40s, <laughs> but most of them were uh, less than 30. Uh, they commented at breakfast the last uh, day, which was uh, Saturday or Sunday. They said, how can he still be so fired up running on 200% of all its cylinders when he's been on his feet 15 hours a day for six, seven, eight days, and we've been sitting on our arses, uh, and we're tired and he's not. You know why? Because I, and if you don't find something that you love what you do, don't bother. Because if you don't have a passion for what you do and you love, it gets old. I say this stretching a little. Um, it's like a, uh, a significant other that you've been around too much. You know what I mean? Everybody in this room can relate to that, I think. Okay? Well, if you're not passionate about what you do in life, it gets old. And then it becomes work. And as soon as it becomes work, you're finished. The reason why I'm fired up at the end of a six, seven day week of 15, 18 hours a day is because I'm passionate about pulling you sorry asses across the goal line. Because that's my goal in life now, to pull as many of the sorry individuals on the planet across the goal line as I can before they put dirt on me. But does that look like your group? No, it doesn't look like your group. I mean, in no way, shape, manner, or form. You know, maybe if we had a bunch of bunny rabbits <laughs> running there, uh, or um, it's unbelievable. But again, you are who you hang around with, you know? And as Oprah Winfrey says, and which I, I talk about a lot, is that you want people with a like mind and it, that are better than you, smarter than you, more intelligent than you, to get on your bus. And don't be so con concerned about what you're gonna do with those people, but you wanna, you know, the joint brain is, you know, there's nothing the joint brain, collective brain or brains, can't overcome, and I give the example of the uh, atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project, and they were put together, uh, and they were told, we need, uh, we need to develop a weapon of mass destruction, which they didn't call it that back in those days, uh, in the middle 40s, to end the war in the Pacific, uh, and they did. They didn't know if it was implode or explode, but they did. But if, you're, if, if your team doesn't look like that, then you should, I won't say you should give serious thought, you should just change. If you are not experiencing anxiety, if your problems are not replaced, as soon as you solve one with a bigger one that's geometrically bigger, then you're not growing. I hate to hear people tell me my business is running smoothly, everything's great. Well then he might as well, or she might as well blow their brains out because they sure as hell aren't growing. What my deal is all about is growing geometrically, quantumly. And just remember that and keep an open mind. Because I have been there and done that. There's no question about that. Yeah, yeah. Another thing, and I said this yesterday, just because you haven't done it, just because you've never been around somebody that hasn't, that hasn't done it, and just because you've never heard of it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Because absence of evidence is not evidence of their absence. I'm going to say some things that are real foreign to you. Some things that you've been taught by your parents, your grandparents in school. And basically, all that is crap. Now, I'm not talking about moral issues and things like that, or religion. I don't get into that. I was raised a Roman Catholic, if that tells you. And I'm still a Roman Catholic, and my wife's a convert Catholic, if that gives you any idea about where I stand on religion. But I'd be glad to debate any of that at, uh, during the break. So just keep an open mind. The, the high performance people that I will continue to allude to all day long live in a different world than you. They came from the same world as you did, but they live in a different world. They think differently. And unless we build the right foundation, uh, I mean, the house will be wobbly and it'll be, uh, you know, you gotta, we got to build the right foundation. And for the most part, most people in this room and most people listening on YouTube have to come to the realization, as sad as it is, that you have pissed, you have urinated, heretofore up until this morning, your entire life down a hole. Very simple. That's it.
if you want to create massive wealth. If you just want to be a happy, slappy housewife from Dundee, or a happy, slappy bimbo from Toronto, or a happy, slappy guy who goes to the Little League games in Mesa, Arizona, then that's okay. But if you want to create some money, and money's not everything. But if you don't money, think money can buy happiness, you don't know where to shop. You can get money and then go save the world. You can get money and save the forests in Brazil. You make money and go save global warming, which I don't believe in. You can, I mean, and save the, uh, the kids in Biafra and all that shit. But without money, you can't save a thing. Don't you understand? Don't the idiots on YouTube understand that? Until you make some shekels. Until you make some coin. You can't help anybody. Because if love got the job done, you wouldn't all be fucked up. Matthew and I were discussing some of the things um, about uh, why you've discounted um, on a subconscious level some of the things that have happened because absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. And he said something very profound for an Australian. This is heavy duty shit. But he said, I decided to do it, even though it was stupid, I decided to do it. Stupid meaning the, follow the process to a, an intellectually bright guy who's an engineer. And see, you won't. You, you see, you'll figure out a better way. And he followed the stupid process that works and has been working for 45 years, 20 some years before when I was doing it. <clears throat> in 22 years since I've been coaching. And he called it, I, he wasn't trying to be insulting or anything, he says, I just decided to uh, follow it, you know. How did you say it? Instead of trying to be smart, I would just try to be stupid, shut that part off of my brain and just do it. And what happened? He did it. And that's why it's hard for the YouTubers and all the other because you, you, you can't dumb, you know, dumb down. You, you, won't, you will not believe that it's easy. You can't, you know, you won't. <clears throat> but he put it very succinctly. He sh you know, he just dumbed down and shut off that part of his brain and just followed the steps. You don't need case studies. You have a, you have a template you have a script that a monkey can read. That Alex wants a case study because he wants to know the shit behind it because he's stupid. And that's why he's poor. You don't need any case studies. How many times do I have to say? You have the script. I said don't change a word on the script. Not a comma. If it's got misspelled words, send it out misspelled. The last thing you need is a case study. This is why you're poor. This is why the watching this on YouTube are so poor. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'd love to know what did you take from this video that you're going to immediately apply to your life or to your business? What was the most important lesson that you learned? Please leave it down in the comments below. I'm super curious to find out. I also want to give a quick shout out to Surge Wisdom. Thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and making that review on your YouTube channel. I'm glad you enjoyed the book and I really, really appreciate your support. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon.